I want to read this opening statement by Per Governor Baker's order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GLC 30A, Section 20, the public will not be allowed to physically access the school committee meeting, but can be viewed live on Zoom. And for those of you who are joining us, I really appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to your comments tonight. So thank you again for, for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll open up with public comments. So Bill, are you gonna um, have public comment just on items not on the agenda so that if people have comments that are specific well, to school closure- we this up those. because of our situation uh, because I think people really have some concerns. Uh, and I, I think uh, if they have any concerns about what is going on and uh, any uh, regards whether it's on the agenda or off the agenda, I think we open this up tonight. I think that's more important. Do you want to do that after um, Lori does an update or did you want to, I'm just thinking that what might happen is people have questions that Lori answers. Pardon me? We could we can move Lori up uh, and discuss uh, our closure, and then we can get public comments. That's fine. You want to do public comment about anything other than school closure first, and then um... yeah, that's a good idea. And then okay. that way, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to prevent people from asking questions that Lori already knows she's going to answer. Okay, so okay, then let's go with public comments or things not in regards to the virus and our school closing at this point in time. I think that's a great idea. Do I have any comments at all? Any questions from the public? You'll need to unmute um, your microphone if you uh, would like to uh, make a comment or you could use your raise hand um, and I can talk about I'm scanning. Can you even see everyone? I'm, I'm scanning through the pages and I'm, I'm actually looking at the participants. Um, Lori Andrade, I would like to make a comment. She has her hand up. I'm going to unmute you, Lori. Go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, it is related to the closure, but it's just on behalf of FEA. Um, I would like to um, thank you all for supporting um, paying all of the members uh, through the closing. Uh, we really appreciate it and we are working hard. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Thank you, Lori. I think it's probably us that should be thanking you guys for figuring this all out. I don't see any other hands raised. Um, Okay. If someone else, if I'm missing something, please. Um, Gary. Um, John Antonucci, who was a superintendent at the ferry, wrote a letter um, to his staff about, and one line stood out in, it, in regards to what Lori Andre just said was that we were asked to come up with a, um, some answers in a 24 hour time period you know, to, and so I know the teachers have been working hard and I um, echo what Lori said and, and th I mean, Lori, what um, Lori Andrews said, and thank you very much. Yes. Bill, I don't see any other um, okay. hands raised. Let's move to you then, Lori, on uh, school closures. Okay. All right, so when Desi first came out with guidance, uh, when we were uh, put in our first two weeks of uh, closure, the guidance at that point uh, basically uh, stated that we were to only provide review and enrichment, and that the time uh, on learning would not count uh, at that time. Since then, uh, we all know that the school closure was extended until May 4th. And with that extension, um, there is more um, local control of uh, making decisions about learning. And so I do wanna um, share with you that uh, we are going to move into new learning. Um, our instructional leaders uh, are working uh, with our teachers and coming up with um, these, the new 
uh, continuity of learning plan. And I'm gonna uh, ask uh, Sonia just to share a little bit about how those committee meetings have going, are going and what we might expect, at least initially, as our new uh, learning plan. Dr. Tellyer. Thank you. Just making sure I had unmuted. Um, uh, thank you for this opportunity. The instructional leaders um, from both the curriculum council and the teacher leadership of the grade level leader network um, both met today. Um, both spent about an hour and a half to two hours each doing some planning. And then Morse Pond's um, leadership network is going to meet tomorrow morning. Um, as we move into this phase two, we introduce new learning uh, for our earliest and youngest learners for pre-K. We're presenting that on our website as a letter to families that's being written um, by Lenny Cook Johnson, our director of early childhood programs. And uh, there's currently one posted and we're updating that with activities. For kindergarten through grade four, uh, we're gonna continue to post plans on our website. And for our kindergarten one and two, we're also gonna be creating new um, paper-based materials um, because we have not widely distributed devices at that um, age group and we are going to be mailing those directly to the homes and not asking people to come up for pickup opportunities. So details on that will be forthcoming. Um, we hope to have those released early next week. Um, as I mentioned, grades five and six are meeting tomorrow. and We'll have more definitive plans about their phase two after those meetings in the morning. Um, and for grades seven through 12, the curriculum council spent a great deal of time today um, really sitting back and looking at how um, learning can be delivered, how interaction with students can happen. And we were overwhelmed by um, a pretty significant majority using Google Classroom and or Schoology, um, our secured learning management system. So we are going to be changing the messaging that's posted online so it speaks directly to um, students looking at their district-sponsored uh, school email accounts and then accessing announcements, lessons, and um, assignments and activities through either Google Classroom um, or Schoology. And um, there are a couple of instances where teachers are still doing the primary communication and distribution of assignments through email. But we're also looking at other platforms, including Google Meet, which is part of our current Google suite of tools, as well as Zoom, as we're here uh, gathered this evening, as other ways that we can create face-to-face -face interactions for small groups and whole classes. Thank Excellent. you, Dr. Tai. Um, I just I want to add that um, you know this is a new world um, for everyone, and uh, especially uh, as our teachers are navigating um, these. Uh, new, new waters and, and how we provide learning for our students and they're working really hard. Um, some teachers uh, are a little more tech savvy than other teachers and we're trying to offer support. There is time to, you know, uh, to, um, that they need to actually develop new lessons um, and, and just what does this look like and how do we provide uh, lessons for everyone. So uh, everyone's really working hard. Um, we uh, are doing our best to um, get the, the learning started for our students. I think we spent a great deal of time last week establishing um, connections and reaching out to all students and really making those phone calls and get, getting them engaged. And I think it's really set us up well. Um, so I think that the right decision was to have the first couple weeks as review and uh, enrichment as we're trying to get kids up and running and our teachers up and running and, and making it all work. And so we're figuring that out. Um, now with this extended learning, it does take time to develop the plans. And so uh, we're working on that this week. Um, we had our um, two week plan that actually run through this week. So there was uh, learning um, that, that students can still be engaged in while um, Dr. Tellier, the team and um, uh, our instructional leaders uh, get these packets ready. So I do appreciate everything that the teachers are doing. Um, I'll echo everything that was said before. It's, um, it's a different world and teaching this way is very different too. And we recognize that and we, we've got to give our teachers time to, um, you know, figure that part out and our students to figure, wait, it's new learning for them and a way for that to figure out. So we will get there. Um, the grading, uh, I know there were some questions about the uh, third quarter uh, grading, and I just um, wanted to say that during the time of um, uh, the grading, we uh, 
we, we stopped, we, the online learning during the last couple of weeks have not been graded, um, but if students um, were making up work, they were uh, certainly able to do that, um, but uh, it will not, there's no penalties. Nothing will count against the students um, uh, during this time. This, you know, really, uh, as much as it's changed things for the, the students, it also has for the, uh, I mean, for the staff, it also has for the students. And, you know, that was a big change saying that we're not going to be in school. And so we're not going to have penalties for students um, for the work that, um, that they might have missed. Uh, moving forward, um, there will be um, a shift. Um, so we can count the, the, um, the time on learning. So we will look at some grading practices moving forward. There will be um, opportunities for credit and no credit. And uh, there may be some opportunities uh, in uh, some areas where there, there will be alphanumeric um, grades. But looking at the credit, uh, no credit, uh, we wanna make sure that uh, no students um, are uh, penalized or given a grade of no credit um, if, they, if there's any inequities in uh, the learning opportunities or materials or uh, resources or access. So there will not be penalties for, um, for that. So they will not be awarded a um, no credit um, based on that. And, and that'll be um, uh, a different kind of looking at that assessment for each student too, about what is uh, available and moving through um, that. The remote learning will actually um, look different and this was part of uh, DESE guidance. Uh, we do not expect students um, to do their entire learning sitting in front of um, their laptop and uh, working remotely with tech. So we do want a combination. Um, Desi has um, guided us that a student, the length of the student uh, normal student day, the regular uh, student day, uh, we should be looking at about half of that. And within that half, some of that will be teacher directed and some will be um, students self-directed. And in that uh, student self-directed, they may engage in um, uh, some uh, nature. It might be in their yard, right? There might be um, some, some learning that's around the house. There may be some maker spaces, some creative, you know, they might look at uh, what's in the house and being able to um, create uh, something that students are used to doing with hands. It may be PE activities. Our teachers are providing um, uh, opportunities each day of keeping kids physically active. And so it could look very different um, uh, day to day, but we don't expect students to be in front of their computers the, the entire learning um, uh, process. Although we do know that there will obviously be um, perhaps more than we would if we were attending school in, you know, in the physical school. Uh, the um, I would also like for us to address um, how we are going to support our students um, uh, with disabilities uh, and um, also talk a little bit about how we're providing counseling supports. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Woodward um, to share a little with, uh, with us um, for, for our, uh, our wonderful students in the special education world. Joan? <laughs> Okay, hold on, I'm gonna unmute you. Okay, you're unmuted, now you can talk, thank you. So as Lori, thank you, Lori. So as Lori had just stated, um, with the initial closure, uh, notice of closure for that two week, um, our guidance was to ensure that we were doing um, reviewing and enrichment educational opportunities and there was to be no new content, um, you know, so to ensure that um, we were supporting our students and as Sonia spoke to, with our continuity of learning plan. Uh, last week, we did get guidance out of the um, US Education Department. So at the federal level, as well as guidance from um, Commissioner Riley and Russell Johnson, who's the Associate Commissioner um, of Education and oversees the Office of Special Education uh, Programming. Um, and with that, that is when we, we saw a significant shift. So we are in the moment of shift right now. And as Lori said, we're moving from review and enrichment type opportunities to being able to 
explore new learning opportunities. Um, and with this becomes the requirement to ensure that we're providing faith to all of our students, the free and appropriate public education under the Americans with um, Disabilities Education Act. So um, at this point, we are, this week, we are working diligently to see how we can increase our supports and uh, meaningful educational opportunities for all students on um, with um, individualized education plans running the gamut from um, some supports through accommodations and um, check-ins from special education teachers all the way through the continuum of our students that may be in our um, more of our specialized programs that required much more modification. Um, so it is important to know that some of the um, or, or the service delivery as Russell Johnson shared with us can really be looked at in in the area of two separate um, service delivery types and one of that are supports and resources and the other one would be more of instruction and services. Um, so it is very important to also recognize that with the provision of special education services, especially if we think about some of the pullout services, related service providers, um, and um, some of our substantially separate programming, that that is going to look very different um, when we're talking about remote learning versus what we're able to do when we're in a face-to-face -face, um, environment. Um, so things that we can be doing are ensuring that we're providing um, supports and materials. So there are the continuity of learning plan and we will continue to, um, to work ways to ensure that we're getting uh, resources materials into the hands, uh, especially when it comes to more modified type work. Um, you know, the department recognizes that, it, you know, resources can be strategies, those packets and projects we've spoken about, um, matched with regular and ongoing communication from special education team members. We are able to do um, some virtual and online and telephonic instruction. So again, as Lori and Tanya spoke about, some of our Google Classrooms and our Zoom meetings, those are other opportunities. We're looking at exploring a ways to making sure that we're having our related service providers be able to um, interface with those students and parents so that we have more um, online, like telephonic type instruction. We are, um, again, as Lori said, not all learning needs to be um, uh, on the computer or internet. Um, much of it can be through exploration um, outside, um, whether, whether it be physically inside in your home, but off of outside of remote learning <laughs> or internet learning um, outside as well. Um, the, you know, the important piece here is really that shift, that moment of shift we're in right now. Um, so our teachers currently have been checking in and providing um, some, some check-ins and supports for our, our students um, that, are, that, that are supported through individualized education plans. Um, and we are continuing to do that. Uh, we want to be um, very, as, as Sonia spoke, Dr. Tellier spoke about building out the um, continuity of learning plan, special education, we are also building that out. So um, more is coming. Um, as Lori spoke about counselors, it is really important to know that all of our counselors are still checking in with the students. We do have secure platforms. Um, uh, doxy.me and Zoom platforms that are meeting with all of our um, confidentiality, student confidentiality um, requirements so that we are able to do telecounseling. Um, so that is happening. We do have um, services in place in case there are needs. We recognize that this is an extremely difficult and stressful time for many, um, uh, for our students, for our staff, for our families. Um, and any time that there is, if you feel that you have, um, you have any member in your family or your child that is in need of more additional counseling support, please, please reach out to your counselors. We have services in place to ensure that not only are there the check-ins and the counseling sessions, but there are also other additional mental health supports or, uh, in services to ensure that during this time where um, we are in the global pandemic and there's a lot of anxiety around that, that we are, are supporting our students and our families in um, that aspect as well. Thank you, John. So, um, so we are, um, as uh, Sonia and, and Joan um, both mentioned, so we have uh, working on plans this week. We're working furiously. 
um, teachers are uh, getting up to speed to figuring how um, they're going to um, conduct this learning in uh, Google Classroom or uh, Schoology or Zoom classes um, or um, through emails. Um, so there's many different ways um, that teachers will be connected. So um, yes, Joan. Oh, sorry, may I, I add <laughs> one other thing? I apologize. I didn't forget. Um, in addition to, like I said, what we're doing with the teachers reaching out, our special education, our teachers, our related service providers, we're also going to make sure that, you know, one of the suggestions from the Department of Education, um, special education suggestion was also creating office hours um, so that there is that real opportunity for some consultation as well. So I apologize, but that's an important piece. I just wanted to make sure that I, I shared. That's extremely important for our um, students with disabilities and their parents to be able to have that consultation time, um, you know, with the teachers um, and our SEBAs, um, yeah, uh, to offer that support. So thank you for that. Um, so, uh, Bill, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Uh, that's my Laurie, update right now. Laurie, it's John. Can I just make a comment on that? Yes. Yeah. So, no, just to uh, uh, shout out to everybody on the... Um, uh, over at Lawrence, um, my my daughter, everybody's doing a good job, and yourself included, of course, in the team. Uh, but um, Miss Mello's class, uh, and some of the folks I might forget somebody, but Miss Della Sapriti and Miss Taylor as well, they did a uh, a, a Zoom meeting uh, with the kids in the uh, the learning center class, and it was fantastic. And then just followed up with uh, print material in the mail as well, which was exciting to get. And then also just some great links. Uh, there's some great links with uh, some field uh, uh, field trip, you know, of uh, the San Diego Zoo and all different kinds of things. So multi multi uh, level, uh, multi time reaching out is really kept some semblance of normalcy, and it's greatly appreciated. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing, uh, Terry. Um, some parents may be worried about this thing we've heard on the news called Zoom bombing. And I think you have a plan about that too, correct? Yes, thank, thank you for asking that. So um, the Zoom um, actually reached out to us and uh, as well as uh, there was a report sent to uh, superintendents today um, from the FBI and basically said, um, and I'm just gonna read um, what it says. And so it's, um, so individuals um, can continue uh, to transition online uh, lessons and meetings. Uh, the FBI recommends uh, exercising due diligence and caution in the cybersecurity efforts. Uh, the following steps can be uh, exer uh, exercising due diligence and caution. Um, we have do not uh, make meetings or classrooms public. Uh, in Zoom, there are two options to make a meeting private. Uh, we are uh, not to share the link um, to the uh, teleconference or to the classroom uh, on any unrestricted publicly available social media uh, post. Um, so just provide the link directly to the specific people and uh, to manage the screen sharing options um, that we set it to host only. And then there's um, also uh, the meeting room um, that people enter into the meeting room and then um, the teacher can check through the meeting room and then add them into the class um, so they know that they're just getting the, uh, the students that are supposed to be in. So um, that is going out to um, both families and staff. And I, the difference is that's a classroom and we absolutely need to keep it um, uh, private and only for the students that are participating. This is a public meeting uh, and therefore um, we are using Zoom. It was shared uh, publicly and um, we would have to do that by um, the open uh, meeting law. So. Uh, anyone can join our um, our open meeting, but uh, the, the cautions were around the classroom and how to make sure to keep it private. So um, we've already been sharing this with the with the teachers um, that are using the Zoom, and we will continue um, to make sure that they're aware of that. Um, I do want to make an apology um, tonight. Uh, I believe that there have been uh, some uh, people that have been trying to get in uh, to the session, and apparently it. It shut us off at 100. Uh, we were told it was unlimited, so I am sorry uh, for anyone that was um, unable to join us. Uh, we will look into that uh, feature uh, and make sure that we uh, have that opened up um, uh, for the next um, 
school committee meeting. We, I'm so happy and pleased with all the participation. Uh, and so anyone that, um, this is being recorded. So when you see this recording, um, please accept uh, our apology uh, for the limitation. Um, Bill, can I just add on to that, that if we have people who, um, you know, may know of others who are, were trying to get access and, and somehow couldn't get in, that they're welcome to send their questions um, to the school committee address as well. So that's just school committee at falmouth.k12.ma.us and they can share anything that they want to that way if they were, if they were trying to get on with questions in particular. Excellent. Uh, Melissa. Sorry, can I just, um, thanks Bill. Can, I just want to encourage anyone that's unable to get on, of course they're not gonna hear it right now, but maybe some of the folks that are on could send a message to the people that are unable to get on that we are live streaming through our regular channel 14. So it would, unless they were going to, of course they can send us an email um, with their thoughts and concerns, but if they just wanted to watch, um, that would be okay. Or maybe, I don't know how else to address if they had live comments is my pickup, but we are live streaming. Andrea. Um, I actually had a question for Sonia um, in regards to the, um, the, the this transition into the next phase and the meetings that you had today um, with more teacher instruction happening. Um, do you know if the plan is to, you know, have that in a specific setting or like in terms of time frame, or is it going to be asynchronous? Because I think that's something that parents would really like to know in terms of what time they need to make available for the students. Um, we did discuss that a bit today um, in as much as at the high school they are probably going to set a school-based schedule coordinated around period. Um, we had talked about whether or not we could do it by grade level or by subject but kids would have to make choices but if we organize it by period then they don't have to make a choice because they each have um, one course during that time frame. So I know that they are um, going to be coming together and making a plan around um, how to coordinate that um, and then they're also going to be talking about the regularity of that. Um, how long it would be and how often because of the balance also against students doing um, work on their own um, independently and then some of the activities that may ask them to construct something or um, you know go into their yard as superintendent door shared so trying to balance all of those things as well um, but they are doing them um, um, setting up those types of schedules for interactions at the school level so that information will be forthcoming Great. thank you you're welcome so um, if, if the um, community has questions. Uh, if you go to the uh, participant, manage participants, um, there is a hand raising uh, feature uh, because we have um, four different screens. Uh, now I am scanning, but those that don't have the pictures up, I wouldn't be able to see if you're waving. Um, I do see a um, hand up for Lori Andre. Lori? And Bill, when you have, um, add me to the list. And I, I <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Kelly, I missed okay. your it's okay. Go ahead, Kelly. Yeah, go ahead. Um, oh, go uh, okay. Um, so I guess I first I, I'm just appreciative that we've gotten some direction from the state um, Department of Ed that we can move forward because it was a little nerve wracking to think about going this many weeks and not being able to to move the content forward. So I am grateful for that and I'm I'm hopeful that we get even more guidance as we as we move ahead. Um, but I had um, two questions. One is, is, what is the best way for parents to be encouraging their kids to get this, um, this contact with their teachers? Because, you know, we've got kids that are, you know, across the, the span. We've got some fourth graders who are maybe very um, active at checking their email and they know exactly what they're doing. And then we've got some eighth graders that maybe not so much. So what, what is the, the best way for us to en encourage them to be getting the information that they need? Should they rely on email or is, um, and, and, and I apologize that I, I honestly don't know whether the Google Classroom or Schoology feeds notices into their email um, so that they can get it all in one place or do they need to check the 
the Google Classroom and the Schoology and the email. And I, it's fine if that's the system. It's not an issue. I think that parents just need to know what, where to be pushing the kids to be checking. Sonia, do you want to uh, address that? So um, Schoology and Google Classroom will push information out. Sometimes they need to have um, additional settings. They can go into their own personal settings if they want the notification that the teacher puts there to also forward to their email. Um, school email is only applicable um, beginning at grade seven under the current configuration okay. that we have at Google. Um, emails that are going out um, from grade six or lower are being directed at families. So it's based on the most current information that we have in PowerSchool. Um, and then that's how they're setting up the details then if they're going to do um, a Zoom or use Google Meet for some type of visual face-to-face uh, -face interaction. Um, so for the students, they can, again, seven through 12, where they have school-based email, um, they can set up Schoology or Google Classroom to push the notifications to them, um, or they can be checking both. Um, we do have some educators who are um, sending the information directly through email because they have not um, gotten set up yet. Um, and are we working to try, I'm sure we have families whose emails are, have typos in them or they don't work anymore or they don't work at that place anymore so their email isn't any good. Are we being successful at hunting everyone down so that we have a way to communicate with them? So we've also been um, having conversations about if there are students with whom there's been no interaction, um, multiple attempts, um, who else in the school leadership team has that information and can attempt to make connections, may already have a relationship established. Um, and that's also been included in the FAQs that Superintendent Dorr has been sending in staff updates. Um, so if you're trying some of these other electronic means, um, sometimes you just have to step back and, and try um, the phone. Um, which sometimes, you know, to landline versus cell line um, can, can be an issue at this time. Um, but just trying to also look at who are the other adults in that student's life that they have a relationship with and being able to make connections. One of the other things that was brought up is, especially K-1 and 2, was the uh, paper-based material being mailed home. So I would think that that's still an outlet to kids who we cannot contact with through an email through whatever, but I think that's that should be open to all, again, based on need, based on availability, and based on we need these kids to learn, and obviously that's important, and I think those contacts, whether it's mail, whether it's email, whether it's Google, Schoology, et cetera, I think those are all important. Thank you. All right. Any other Sorry, thoughts? Lori, I, uh, I had bumped you out of the queue. <laughs> and then, oh, to Lori Andre. Lori um, Andre. Is any other uh, school committee member that I haven't seen uh, that wants to, to talk? Okay. Sorry, Lori Andre, do you want to uh, ask your question or comment? I would like to, please. Um, so, um, Bill, you spoke to what I did want to uh, comment about. Um, there is a Concern, I think, that goes both ways as far as the um, equity and access, um, where the uh, K1 and 2 um, do not have one to one devices, um, and where we have found that there is someone, um, you know, hardships have been addressed um, as they are forthcoming. Um, my concern is about um, students who um, are not engaged and how to get them engaged and keep them engaged. And at what um, level is that going to affect what we're trying to do? Um, we could try to find out, every, and I think about this as far as staff too. There are staff that are in the same situation as some of our own students. Um, and this can be exhausting. I have, I, I am honestly telling you, I have never worked harder than I'm working remotely. Um, I have been uh, on these meetings literally all day, and I can point out about three people have, that have been there with me since 8.30 this morning. And so um, I think just keeping in mind that um, the, that our 
staff our families too, and um, that there is uh, our concerns about the K to two um, students and their families. Um, I know we are with the best of intentions trying to address everything we can and there are a lot of unknowns. Um, but I just want to be mindful as much as we um, tend to the needs of, of our students um, that we need to tend to the needs of ourselves. Um, today we have over 100 people that want to be involved and in this Zoom meeting. And as time goes on, that number could dwindle. And just to keep in mind that, you know, we're, we're looking at an opening right now that's scheduled to be, you know, May 4th, um, but that this isn't a sprint, you know, it is a marathon and we don't know uh, when, uh, you know, when things could change and they change on a daily basis and, and we don't know how they're going to change. Um, but, you know, we're all working really hard. These remote meetings take a lot out of people. This remote learning, this remote teaching is a lot of energy. Um, I find myself, like I said, I've been on this since 8.30 this morning. Um, and it's just something to consider as much as um, we want to. And we are supporting and FEA is working um, hand in hand as much um, as we can squeeze in our meetings as well to continue to um, support the students. <laughs> Sorry, I have a couple dogs that are playing. Um, but um, I just, just think about being like this for hours and hours on end. So just had, had to bring that up. Thank you. And, and I would have said thank you to everybody when you said something before, but I've learned in the Zoom etiquette if you keep going in and out and saying thank you. So I put my video on so I could give hand signals. <laughs> I appreciate your best intentions, and I think your teachers do that, and I think they do that the last two weeks, and they're going to do this for as long as this resumes, and I think of two resources at this point in time, and that's A, teachers, and staff, and two students, and you're in the right direction with best intentions, so I appreciate those efforts very much. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Andrea um, Bryan. Andrea? Um, yeah. Hi, yes, I'm Andrea Byron. I am a um, Morris Pond mom to triplets in fifth grade. And uh, we, we just returned back to the Falmouth community after two years being in Florida. And my concern is um, like, you know, the different levels of learning. I have two that are currently not on grade level and one um, that has been working extremely hard. I am this, you guys, First and foremost, you guys, I, I love Falmouth. Um, you guys do an amazing job ever since I entered with triplets and kind of you've helped me navigate through this for the success of my children. And I'm scared. I'm scared for them. Um, you know, I'm scared for I see one regressing, not taking it serious. Um, I've been in communication with the teachers. I've been you know, I've explained to them that, you know, for now, this is the, the routine, it's going to change, we need to adapt. And um, which being a family of multiples, we have a lot of structure in our life in order to feel safe and things to go smoothly. So this kind of has made them spiral. Um, the teachers have been great, you know, I guided them, I've asked, you know, told them my expectations indiv as individuals. And um, I think I take it so personally because I try so hard even on a non-crisis event. And um, I'm just scared for their academic growth, how this is going to make them regress. And maybe I misunderstood you, but and I don't know if it's a, you know, a state thing that needs to be lifted where it can become more structured and have more of a forum like the private school setting does. And I get that, you know, not every family, um, you know, what happens, you know, th there's a lot of things that you have to put in mind in a public school setting. And I, I understand all that. Um, and I know it's one day at a time and each, you know, 
things are gonna, you know, change and, and I'm, I support everything. Um, but I just, I'm stuck and I feel lost and I feel like I can't do anything for them. I, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm just touching. I, I feel, I feel your pain. I know that there are a lot of um, parents that's struggling and want to do so much um, more, Andrea. So I, I hear you. Um, and, and I know it's, and it, you know, it's one of those, it's that age where you try to let go and let them become independent academically. And, but behind the scenes, I obviously tell the teachers what I'm doing, but, you know, and I'm still trying to hold them accountable independently with this as well, because, it, it teaches them that, you know, routines change and we need to adapt and try to survive. So I just, I, I don't know. I think one of the things that would make you feel better, and, I, and, I, and I've looked at this too, because I, when, we, when we went two weeks from the state and basically the teachers were told to uh, basically enhance opportunities and review. And there was really no new content. One of the things that has changed now, I think now we're back to new content. We're, new, we're now at more of a learning level at the local level. And I think that's so important. I think the first two weeks was experimental by a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, absolutely. And, the, and we took that direction from the state. Yeah. Now it's more local control. And with local control, you're going to see, I think, right. just a lot more machine and a lot more less anxious people and kids. Yeah. And, you know, I, I try not to watch the news, but unfortunately things flash up like the state has canceled for this year and like, man, you know, I'm trying to keep it one day at a time, but what if, what if school is canceled for the rest of the year? What is that going to do to my children, to our Falmouth community? And, um, you know, I'm like, I can't imagine what you guys have been doing for us, you know, I see what you guys do for us on a great day. And um, I, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. And I like, I'm not seeing, res, you know, I, I felt like I felt, saw more results in my children last week. And then somehow they got wind of this doesn't count. And now they're on the, well, this doesn't count, you know, and, and I'm, I talk openly and I said, well, your brain counts and we want to, yeah. I just, uh, I don't know. I just don't want to see them drop further and regress further where they already struggle. And, you know, we've seen some positive things and I guess it's just, I got to give up control and it is what it's going to be. Andrea, we, I think that so many of us appreciate your comments. Um, we do. And, um, you know, there were, there was difference between the first couple of weeks where yes. uh, learning, um, you know, didn't count and we were just trying to maintain yes. uh, review and enrichment. And now we are moving into, um, we just need some time to do it, but I really yep. appreciate it. Um, Bill, we've got a couple more hands. Well, let's, um, and, uh, let's get some more interest. Yeah. Uh, so we have, um, uh, uh okay. can, I, can I just, can I just make a comment to, to, uh, Andrea? Is John? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, Andrea, I just, uh, first off, congratulations, triplets, and all the way to more. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say, uh, you know, um, you're, you know, I, you're a uh, inspiration of how you broke it out, of how you're mapping things out, uh, you know, uh, t saying to your children, adapt, and, and you're, you're doing a great job. I mean, far be it for me to, to, to comment on how you're doing, but you thanked us. I have to say, you're doing a great job. And you yeah. and God bless you. You're doing all you can, and that's all we can do at this time. And you, you're breaking out in a, in a smart way. Um, and and there will be times when when uh, you know uh, they they're not they're not you know going to accomplish mountains in a day. And like right. you said, you said everything you said is things that you you're coaching me honestly of how I should be. And just look in the mirror if you look for the, the person to motivate you the best and because because you're doing a great job. And that's all I just had to share that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Annette, 
I'm going to unmute you. You're next. Okay. Start the video. Sorry. Uh, hi. Uh, um, I'm Sanjay, a student at Falmouth High School, and I had a question about Zoom meetings. Um, so, some so two teachers um tried to uh, tried to schedule a Zoom meeting at the same time. Uh -huh. Um, and I was wondering, in, and I was wondering, like, are we going to do it? But I believe some someone mentioned something about do, having the classes correspond to 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 like periods. Um, is is that? I think I think that we, I think that we should uh, do that because I I had that conflict. Uh, um, um, but will the but will it necessary? But it corresponds to the periods. It's what I want to know is uh. Will we have to? Uh, will we have stuff stuff at seven a seven a.m. possibly to make a correspondence of periods? <laughs> Sanjay, you always have the best questions. I always appreciate uh, your participation. Sanjay, you want to address um, some of how we're going to to move forward with that, or how we're how we're thinking about it, uh, because we know some of that's happening. Thank you, um, thank you, Sanjay. So when we started talking today about organizing by period. Um, we ask that the schools pick up the conversation. So Principal Gans is gonna be leading that conversation with department heads. Um, should I tell her that you're pro 7 a.m. or against no. 7 a.m.? <laughs> no, um, I, I think realistically in trying to set some of this up, the, the earliest conversation I've heard is eight and I don't wanna hold anybody exactly to that, but that was the earliest I've heard in some of the conversations I've had. Um, but certainly I, I will, um, share your ideas with Principal Gans. And so as they're having those conversations, um, kind of think through that. But the last thing we want is for someone to have to make a choice between meeting with um, one class or another. So um, we need to make sure that you're available to all of your classes when they convene. Could, I, yeah. could I say something? Yes. I, I want to commend that student for not trying to play one against the other one, <laughs> but to come up with a uh, realistic way to do both of them. So good for you. All right, we have Julie Huber. Next, um, you have a question. I'm going to unmute you. Oh, you are you unmuted. Hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm a parent of a third and sixth grader. And I just had some kind of practical questions about when should we expect a schedule to begin? I know you said that people have been meeting. Is it another week, another two weeks? And also just a real plea for consistency in communication. Um, third grades and sixth grader, I don't know if they don't have email and reminding them to check eight different Google classrooms every day seems really impractical. Um, so I guess just an argument for consistency at those levels when they can't go to email when their only option is, is the classroom. Um, and also just very practically, when should I start preparing them for this? Um, you know, like I said, is it next week? Is it two weeks? I don't care where it is, when it is, because I'm so excited you're doing it. I just want to know when <laughs> I should plan for it. <laughs> well, thank you, Julie. Uh, Sonia, you want to talk about, um, again, the timeline that, that we're trying to work under? Sure. So we're hoping to launch these um, updated continuity of learning plans early next week. Um, so as we're putting those together, I think there's a couple other pieces too that we can look at for people who are using Google Classroom. Um, there's a way that we can enable it to send a summary of uh, learning activity out to parents of the students enrolled in the course. Um, so we can look at that and see whether that's something we need to give you directions to connect into or if that's something that we can um, do more broadly on, on our configuration side. Um, but that, that would also help just to sort of have a, a summary of learning for the classes. Um, however, not everyone uh, at the earlier grades is using Google Classroom. So the email communication to the families is the, is the primary way to receive communication back and forth with the teacher. And then the uh, learning plans will be posted to the um, website as well, which is another sort of one-stop shop for you to be able to check um, at a time that, that works for you. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Julie. Um, Grace, you have a question or a comment? 
Oh, sorry. I thought I was muted on your end. <laughs> muted on my end. Uh, first, I just wanted to say thank you for everything you're doing and all the efforts the school district and um, especially all the teachers. I'm the mother of a seventh and a ninth grader. And um, we just uh, have found the teachers to be very responsive. So I thank you for that. Um, the only comment I wanted to make was to just, um, I know everyone already knows this, but when thinking about the work that's assigned and what's being asked of the kids, that in addition to the learning content, they are learning a ton just how to use the technology, you know, the how to use Flipgrid or where to check on Google Classroom, how to upload a video, how to do anything on Google Classroom. That's been a real um, learning curve for everyone. So when thinking about assignments and thinking about you know, even if we're saying it's going to be half the amount of time that you would normally do, take into account all that extra time because there's quite a bit at least happening in our house. And and also for those of us that um, are working full time from home, it's a real challenge because our kids are really stepping up to the plate, but they're being asked to really um, to, to really assume a lot of responsibility and, and that can be very stressful. And I know you all know this. So again, I know it's just as stressful for the teachers. So I guess speaking from both that, that there's grace for both the students and teachers that, that there's a lot of behind the scenes in addition to just the content. So um, I appreciate how much everyone is putting into learning all these new methodologies. I know that I, over the last two weeks, have learned a ton. So uh, just, to, just to keep that in mind, I guess that's all I wanted to request. So thanks for everything you're doing and, um, and just it's a stressful time for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Grace, for your comments. Really appreciate that. And I know the teachers appreciate it too. Um, and I think you've um, echoed what many parents are feeling uh, as we're trying to settle into this um, new school world that we're, we're involved in. Thank you. Um, we have Scott. Scott, you had your hand raised. Sorry, there we go. Oh, okay. Uh, just wanted to make a quick comment. And, um, you know, first of all, thank you for putting this together. It's fantastic. Um, you know, and, and good to see everything kind of moving forward with this. One of the things that we do here is take advantage of the Google Calendar. And not sure if the teachers would be able to load up the kids' Google Calendars with their schedules. Um, that's something that our family shares. We have a shared calendar. Um, and basically, if myself or my wife or uh, Lena doesn't put it into the calendar, then it's not happening. So um, <laughs> that might be something, uh, you know, since we're part of this Google ecosystem, you know, definitely take advantage of it. And uh, oh, that's why my camera wasn't working. Welcome to my basement. This is my, this is my world right now. And, uh, you know, we're all kind of working from home and in, in the same boat. And, um, you know, definitely uh, the other thing too is um, YouTube has lots of videos on how to use some of this technology. Uh, and a lot of times the kids will find it before we do. Um, and sometimes you just got to ask them and they'll point you in the right direction. So, uh, you know, definitely uh, take advantage of the tools that are out there. And, you know, maybe on the tech side, uh, we can pull everything uh, into the, the Google Calendar to kind of maybe be that one centralized location to uh, update uh, all the kids. So just a, just a thought. Great. Thank you. We love suggestions and um, we can talk about that further. Appreciate it, Scott. Um, Jerry, uh, sorry, I uh, missed you there. <laughs> Let me unmute you and then you can talk. Okay, go, Jerry. Hi. Uh, first, I wanted to add my thanks to everyone from uh, the school board to administrators to teachers to parents. I am a grandparent of a seventh grader. Um, and we had a conversation the other night that stuck with me, which is she said as she was getting ready for bed, she said, you know, this is something people will be studying in history a long time from now. Um, I said, yeah, you're right. And she said, um, and a lot of people are keeping journals. She's not one of them. But what I think uh, might be a terrific assignment cutting across all grades done on a pass-fail basis is to have students journal in whatever fashion they like. They might do drawings, they might write poems, 
They might keep a journal a set number of times a day. If they're very talented with technology or working in a tech course, they might do multimedia. They might, as I've seen on uh, Facebook, have people put up pictures from around the world of different places. Just things that, in a sense, in a sense, capture their own reaction to these times, their own mood, their own thoughts. And I think in doing so, it will also help the students feel more whole. So I just wanted to make that as a suggestion to you as you are looking at and thinking about a broader based curriculum that's maybe a little, it can't be purely conventional now, that this might be a way of doing a cross the curriculum means of recording history that could be done on a pass fail basis. That's excellent. Well said. Thank you. Um, we'll definitely take that back to the team. And, um, and I've actually already heard um, my daughter is in a, an art class where they are supposed to be keeping something much like that, the art journal from their, their quarantined time um, so they can look back on it. So yeah. I think, you know, it's such a great idea. And I think that some teachers are already taking it, taking it on. We're actually keeping a journal as well, uh, both the kids and ourselves, just to kind of document um, how we feel about our schoolwork, what we saw today, what we, just anything, just to keep them engaged and not have it be always curriculum based, maybe something they can come back and look on years from now. You know, every kid's going to look at it differently. Every, not just kid, everyone's going to look at it differently. So. I, I really, I like the idea of it. This is history. All right, so um, Sanjay, do you have one more question for us? Jano? Uh, oh, um, about, about the journal, um, um, I, I was just wondering like, if there was a, like, um, I noticed that teacher, Teachers encourage urge me to keep an optional journal. It's not mandatory or anything, or anything. But, but I'm just wondering: uh, is the school considering to, in, like a mandatory journal? Well, Sanjay, I don't know about a mandatory, um, but uh, I I know that uh, a lot of teachers um, do certainly ask you to do journals, as you're you're uh, speaking of. Uh, but now with uh, Jerry's suggestion. Um, we might uh, just have to work that in somewhere. And uh, as Dr. Tellier is looking at me. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you, Sanjay. Uh, it sounds like that you think that's a good idea. Uh, uh, well, well, pers well, um, well, personally, I don't really find the time that the, the coronavirus to, is to, uh, to like cause difficulties for me personally, but I, but I could see how it might for some people. and and why it might be helpful for some people. But, uh, oh, um, so yeah. All right. Th thank you. Um, we have uh, Anna. Hi, Lori, and hi, everybody. Um, I just want to make a comment about those of us that are working full time at home. It would be really helpful if there were very clear expectations of what the children are supposed to be doing and have less of it. I felt like I've been homeschooling the last two weeks and trying to homeschool while working full time is basically impossible. So it would be really great for the students to know, to be held accountable, whether or not they end up getting graded or not, so that they know what they have to submit, when they have to submit it, and what the expectations are. For those of us that are working still, that would be really, really helpful. And again, I don't mind if it's graded or not, as long as the students know they have to turn it in by a certain date. Um, these ideas of projects and stuff are very difficult when we're working full time. So if there's a way to do a bit more balance of things the students can do on their own would be super helpful. Great suggestion. Uh, thank you, Anna. And I, again, I am sure that you're echoing uh, the words of many parents um, struggling, you know, to uh, figure out how to make all this work. Um, we're trying. We'll, uh, we'll, we're going to keep getting better at this. Um, so um, anyone else? I don't... Um, I don't see any other hands. I'm, well, other than the school committee. <laughs> Melissa and Andrea, both of you have your hands up. <laughs> oh, I just, oh, sorry, go ahead, Andrea. Um, I, I wanted to follow up on, um, on the last comment because 
I think we've been spending um, a good amount of time and, and got some nice clarity around the switch from um, the review and enrichment to new learning. But there was that other piece of it that came from the state that I think could maybe use a little bit more explanation. And that's um, what is going to be the, the credit versus no credit. Um, and so as to those expectations, um, I think at the beginning, when we were thrown into this so quickly, teachers really scrambled to come up with things to do. And that was awesome. That's exactly what was needed at the time. But I think there's so many of those things and they can be very scattered and it's um, maybe not the same for every classroom. That is kind of also putting both parents and the students and the students because they don't have anybody to talk to except, you know, really to go to their parents to say, what do I need to do here? Um, so maybe a little bit of clarity around what that credit, no credit option is going to look like and no. um, how we're going to really focus it in on what is uh, important to accomplish and what is that enrichment piece of it. Um, we are working to get clarification around that and to provide guidance and I expect that to come out this week for both parents and uh, staff. Great, thanks. Melissa? Um, a bit ago, I just wanted to circle back around that we do have an EAP program for our staff and educators. Um, that, that I know that everyone knows that, but sometimes I feel like the obvious needs to be stated uh, in public. So I just, I don't want anyone to think that we're not uh, encouraging that. Great. Um, I just wanted to, there was one other question that was typed into the chats and I'm trying to keep up with them um, about whether or not it's too early to know anything about graduation. And my guess is it's probably too early, but I want to at least acknowledge the question and see if you have an answer. Uh, so we're waiting for, uh, I hate to keep saying we're waiting for guidance from uh, Desi, but we are waiting for guidance from Desi. Um, the superintendents um, are very concerned about uh, graduation. Um, and we're starting to talk about what that may look like, um, but I really don't have anything right now that I can share or update because we just don't know, not because we aren't thinking about it. Um, um, there's just so many things that take place, um, you know, the size of gatherings, you know, the guidance around that, um, you, know, you know, hopefully we will be back in school, um, but we don't know that we're going to be back in school, um, but I don't see the, the um, this, the large gatherings um, being um, lifted uh, anytime uh, soon or even in early June. Um, so, I mean, some superintendents are starting to, to talk around, would we want a, you know, summer graduation? Um, but there has been nothing definitive. These are just things that, that we're sharing. Um, I mean, really kind of rack our brains about how we might be able to do a different type of graduation and be creative. Um, so just so you know, it's being talked about. We have not received guidance and um, we're just not sure at this time. And I know that's very unsettling. Um, my heart goes out to the seniors this year. Um, you know, the, this is your year. And um, so, you know, we are, um, it's, it's, we're talking about it and uh, we're trying to figure it out. And I'm sure that um, Principal Gans, um, uh, we've had conversations and I'm sure she'll, you know, uh, talk with uh, parents and students uh, soon. And that's really where we are right now. Um, Miranda, um, do you have your hand up? I don't know if it's Tiffany or not, um, but it says Miranda um, Van Moy. I just wasn't sure if it was the, um... oh, hold on, let me unmute you. Got it, there you are. Hi, Miranda, oh, okay, you're Hello. unmuted. Okay, there you are, okay. Um, I was gonna ask the question about seniors as a current senior, but I think you kind of just answered it. Yeah. So I was just asking for some clarity, especially because there's a lot of, um, exit things that have to happen, especially not just in like the celebration point, but for seniors to let, to actually graduate. 
there's a lot of boxes that need to be checked and there's a lot of uncertainty right now with how people are going to do that, especially with um, the questions of credits and classes and all that kind of stuff. So I think you mostly already answered it. <laughs> I, I wish I had more clarity right now, but we are, um, the requirements for graduation, uh, rest assured, we are working on all that. That part will happen. I was, um, I guess I was actually speaking to the actual physical graduation, um, but uh, let me assure you, we are going to get you to graduation. <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm just looking. Um, for I have one more question as you're scanning. Um, one more question that popped up in the chat is whether MCAS testing is going to happen. So we are still waiting um, for guidance. Um, the uh, commissioner has stated that they have a directional uh, approval from the federal level. It's on Beacon Hill right now, and they have, the legislators have a lot of legislation that they're dealing with, um, mostly around, uh, obviously right now, around the coronavirus. And so it is uh, on the docket to be um, reviewed. Because it's legislative, they have to give uh, Commissioner Riley um, the approval to uh, postpone, modify, or uh, cancel altogether. And so we are waiting for guidance on that. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands. Um, do we have any other um, comments, Andrea. questions in the chat? Andrea. Um, yeah, something that's um, come to mind because this conversation is making it incredibly obvious that not only do our students need supports, our families need supports, um, our teachers and staff need supports. And one of the things that um, is a great asset in Falmouth Public Schools is our amazing volunteer base. And I guess I was just wondering if there are conversations going on about how we might be able to tap into that resource to provide some of these supports, whether it's with understanding the technology or some type of an enrichment or um, some way to interact with with somebody else that might give parents working parents a break um, you know we just have you know we're a thousand volunteers strong and i'm sure there are people out there who would be helpful in this situation uh, Andrea, that's excellent, and we are strong because of our volunteers. Uh, I've been in communication with Tracy. Um, we're, tr we're coming up with ways um, that volunteers can help, and uh, they uh, already thank you so much to all the volunteers that have stepped up and uh, have been supporting us through this. Uh, some of it, I think, um, as far as the learning goes, I think that um, we can identify more areas. I, I think teachers just trying to you know, figure things out with what they need to do now is a struggle. And, um, but for families, um, we definitely need to figure out how we can connect our volunteers to our families more. So um, thank you. And um, yeah, let's, we will definitely keep uh, talking about those. And I like the idea of supporting the technology and, um, you know, the learning for families. I think that's great. Thank you. All right, I'm doing another scan, but I don't see anything, uh, Bill. Um, Finari. Yeah, I just it seems an appropriate time to mention that uh, a number of colleges, uh, you know, for juniors, uh, a number of colleges have begun to waive the uh, SAT requirements. I just thought I'd share that. Thank yeah. you, John. And I just had one last question, and it may be too early to even know, but it's basically for Patrick about um, our budget. Because we, you know, we we put forth the final number um, last year that gets approved at town meeting, but then within that budget, there's line items for er how everything is ideally going to be spent, and obviously it's going to be completely different. Our biggest line item, of course, will be the same because we're still paying everybody. But do we need to do anything um, regarding that, or can? Is there enough flexibility to cover, let's say, all this additional postage for shipping all these things to families, and we don't have as many expenses because we're not keeping the lights on? Or, or do we need to do anything <laughs> for that, Patrick? For some reason, my my video is not working, but can you hear me? 
Yeah. Yes. We can hear you. Okay, good. Um, so, so uh, we're doing okay with that right now. There's, there's uh, school districts have the flexibility of moving uh, money at the end of the year uh, between line items as needed. Our, um, our practice, the, the best practice, that we don't move line items uh, outside of uh, cost centers. We don't move uh, money outside of, in cost centers, I mean schools, you know, our, our uh, cost centers. We don't move line items um, from uh, salary to non-salary, those types of things. So we do have some flexibility in that uh, to meet uh, what's going on this year. So I'm, I'm, that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about other things, but <laughs> not that. Okay, great. Any other comments? Andrea, or excuse me, Megan. Um, I just wanted to um, tell everyone to keep, you know, plugging along, teachers, staff, all the parents and guardians. I think we're all in this together and it's, you know, it's kind of uncharted territory and it can be really overwhelming. Um, I'm in the same boat and I just can't stress enough the communication piece and reach out to your teachers, guidance counselors, they're there, they're willing to help you. Um, I know I've done it myself with, with my son's teachers and um, I think you know any question you have to just make sure that you um, keep that line of communication open and, and reach out to them. Bill, I think, um, oh, uh, Lori Andre just uh, raised her hand again. Lori? You're unmuted, go ahead. Yep, thank you. I My headphone might um, die in the middle of this, but um, I, I really want to point out that the coordination of um, delivering the Cape Kids Meals on Fridays, um, the food for lunch and breakfast going home um, as my in my role as assistant principal I've been working on calling every uh, family in our building at East Falmouth and overwhelmingly um, anyone with food insecurities um, is being addressed there's just it really it takes a village and I know we're all in this with all of the best intentions including parents grandparents caregivers teachers all of us um, but I just would be remiss if I did not mention the uh, amount of time and effort that everyone is uh, putting in to make sure that um, our more marginalized uh, populations are being taken care of so as much as um, you know I I feel a little um, concern about the K-2 uh, not having one-to-one uh, -one devices, um, you know, what we are doing uh, is commendable. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, another uh, from Tim. Hey, this is actually Patricia Pinto da Silva. Tim's my oh. husband. <laughs> A big thanks again to, you know, just to echo what all have said about appreciation to the school district and parents and family in the community, you know, working towards getting us through this. Um, I know I have a son at Lawrence and a son at Mullen Hall and at Lawrence they have an advisory um, sort of, I don't even know how long it is, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour starts the day. And I feel like so much right now is not about school. I'm not worried that my kids aren't gonna learn right now. I feel like school so much about just providing them the structure, connection and grounding during this really complicated time. And advisory just seems like such a precious thing if they could continue to just start their day with a 20 minute connect with their 10 students, or I think it's like between six and 10 students that they would meet with each morning just to check in and say, hey, how are you doing? What's up? You know, um, do just what they did, play a little online game. I don't know if uh, uh, that's part of the, the, um, the plan, but just a thought there. And the, the other thing I just wanted to mention is that as 
I'm sure so many parents have been scrambling to find content and do stuff for their kids during this period. I've checked lots of different school districts to see what's on their websites. And there's so much that each of these districts is doing individually, independently, tailor making, embroidering almost like these programs for each of their districts. And I just wonder, can we just grab what Boston Public Schools has put together? Can we, can we not reinvent the wheel for every grade in every classroom and maybe simplify right now? Um, I'll leave it there, but you know, Boston Public Schools was one of the schools that came up as having some really intuitive content that was sort of easy to use and easy to find. Um, so yeah, those, those two suggestions, the advisory and just making sure we, we take advantage of the work that maybe others have done to simplify our own jobs. Thank you again. Thank you. Lori, anyone else? I don't see any, and I'm just checking the comments again. Um, I don't think we, I think we've addressed everything. Okay, last call. Kelly, anything? Last call. Of course, with the last call, there was um, something that popped up from Alan Kazarian that said, encouraging any parent or student to reach out to their guidance or um, counselor or adjustment counselor if they need to. Um, Excellent. Yeah, I know the uh, counselors are working on their, um, you know, uh, scholarships and things for students too. So um, they're they're working hard at it. So to, to keep all that rolling. Right. Um, someone's been asking regularly about um, sports. Can you see that question? May have missed it. Do you? Can you read it? I mean, do you know it? Will the go oh. Will the go forward learning and the requirements be tied into the ability to play sports if we come back before the season's end? So um, I, I don't know how to answer that. Um, I, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't know. The, um, um, we're not gonna hold, we're not gonna have any penalties for students. And if we get back and sports are, are in session and we're able to do sports, I wanna see kids play sports. Um, you know, I, wanna, I want kids to be able to get back to normal as much as possible, as soon as possible. Um, so uh, we don't wanna, um, but the, I feel out of um, my league answering this because I don't know all the MIA rules, what will come down. Like there's, there's so many other entities outside of me and our schools that may, um, you know, play a part in that. And I, so I can't answer definitively. Um, but personally, um, what I want to see for our students is to be able to participate um, as much as possible in everything that they love. So. Um, yeah, but feel free to hold that over their head and get them to do their work. Oh, well, I sure okay. will. <laughs> Some parents need that little carrot. <laughs> okay. I just want to, I just want to go to some, some more sporting events and see kids play right now. Totally. <laughs> I miss those days already. So, okay. Now I don't, I think that's it, Bill. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Then we can move forward. And again, thank everybody for their input, their ideas. Uh, it is a crazy time. And again, thank you to everyone. Okay. We still have something we need to. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Act, act on the mission, vision, and core values. And that is the front page, which we obviously clarified earlier. Uh, is there a motion? Um, Lori, can you share your screen so people who may not be familiar with it can see it? Sure. Um, just I wouldn't want to vote on something that the public can't see. Sure, just one second. Um, and now that it's up, Bill, if you'd like, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, mission, vision, and core values. Is there a second? I I'll second. second. Any discussion? I missed two seconds. Oh, sorry, Melissa, Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. 
Um, I just want to acknowledge that we've been working on this for a really long time. It started way back in August. This is Kelly uh, Welch, in case yeah. you're I'm off you? the screen. <laughs> in oh, case I'm are. off the screen. Um, that we've been working on this for a really long time, gathering input from the community with the surveys and going to PTO meetings and um, talking with administrators um, to get their input. And, um, you know, as we talked about a little bit in our workshop earlier, uh, earlier this evening, this is, if ever there's a time to make sure we're clear on where we're going and the things that we value, it's now because everything is chaotic. Um, so I just want to acknowledge how much has gone into this over the course of the year, um, culminating in, in what you see on the screen. <clears throat> Thanks for that comment. Any other comments? Okay, we'll do a roll call. Um, Actually, Bill, a point, point of clarification. Okay, go ahead, John. I, yeah, no, that. just a clarification that we seemed in unanimity uh, in, the, um, in the workshop, but th this motion, would that include the, uh, the item of where it would include, say, an inclusive environment welcomes uh, students of all abilities? So um, the definitions are ongoing. We are going to add, I assure you, we are adding the, um, the changes that we made to the definitions, which is the second side of the document. So when we put the, when we uh, get this all to, uh, together um, in the next couple of days and we post this, it will include uh, that, John, yes. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, John. Um, roll call, roll. Uh, Melissa, any other, any other, any other comments? Thank and are you are you opening it up to comments from the community or just the committee? No, just the uh, just the, just us, just the okay. committee. A roll call vote. Um, Melissa. Melissa, yes. Terry. Yes. John. John Fenari, yes. Andrea. Andrea, yes. <laughs> Megan. Megan, yes. Natalie. Natalie, yes. Lisa. Lisa, yes. Kelly. Kelly, yes. And Bill, yes. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And yes, that'll be adjusted and flexible on the back, John. Uh, any other things for the good of the order? I'll leave you with a quote. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. Stephen Hawking. Motion to adjourn. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call. Melissa. Yes. Terry. Yes. John. John Farr, yes. Andrea. Yes. Megan. Yep. Natalie. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Bill. Yes. Adjourned. Hey, one last night, time. Your, your evaluations are due tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't forget. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Thank you, Thank Thank you. everybody. Thank you.